I'm Sandy Alnock. This is Giallo in Vienna, and we're going to give you a little tour today of the art in my house. I'm close to finish with, if you can ever finish with, a home redecorating. I needed new carpets desperately, which of course led me to paint the walls and rearrange things and clean things up. So I thought I'd give you a tour of the art. That painting was plein air done out here in Washington, I think about two and a half, three years ago. This one was painted plein air in a park nearby. And this one kind of has all of the colors that are going to be throughout the house. Uh, gouache painting up above and down here we've got a piece that my dad did. My dad used to make wooden things so I hang that up there in his honor and this is this room before it was transformed. I used to have all the crosses above the fireplace but I simplified it a bit. I've simplified all the walls actually because I used to have three times as many paintings on the walls because over the years I just kept framing things and framing things and there were paintings I did back at the beginning that were not so good, but I kept them in frames anyway. And I thought if they're framed, they should be on the walls. Well, I decided eventually, you know, those could sit in the garage until I have something better to put in that frame and then I'll get it back out. So I'll keep changing the art over time. Now these bookshelves were plain old wood and they were falling apart and kind of cheap. So I thought, why not just paint them so that they do a little bit of disappearing in those sections on either side of the fireplace. And I really liked how that came out because they're very, very busy and fussy. And then the simple painting, it's a half page. My only half sheet painting is hanging above the fireplace, that lighthouse. But then I've got all of my books from the whole house congealed into these two bookshelves. I gave away tons of books, which was really good feeling. My angel collection from my godmother, she used to send me tons of angels. And then this is a painting by my mom. My mom's a spectacular oil, a oil and acrylic painter. And there we've got more angels, more angels, more angels. On the way to the garage, there's a drawing that I did of a truck. This is the only like finished drawing of a nice truck that I've ever done. And I thought on the way to the garage would be a perfect place to put it because there was a hole in the wall that I did a terrible job of repairing anyway. But there you can see my new washer and dryer. I saved for nine months washing all my clothes by hand for nine months, saving up for that. That little cabinet on the right is all my tools. And on the walls in here, I painted, it's hard to see with the glare of the light, but I painted bubbles. And just to the left of that is a wall that has all the dog walking supplies and the dog's paintings that you saw in the previous video. I will link to that and everything else that has a little icon on it. There is a video for this section was what I used to think contrast was because I painted that kind of mid green and I realized that was not dark. So you'll see more dark throughout this, uh, the walls in this video. So I moved the crosses over here instead of over the fireplace and they're on the light wall, which really helps and gives just a little more contrast to them. So they're seen better. And then we've got a couple more pieces on this wall. In the other room, going around the corner, I had this weird pink color. So green in one room, pinkish in another. And I was trying to figure out what color I wanted to go with. I really wanted something more neutral. I just have been wanting neutrals around me. Just I don't need that much excitement color-wise. And when I got to using this dark blue-gray, I just got so happy. It just really worked. And especially when you look at it, in different lights. Sometimes it's more blue, like a Payne's blue gray. Sometimes it's more of a gray, like a Payne's gray, blue gray. You know, that, that color can shift different ways. And I sit here in the evenings on the sofa, watch TV, catch up on the news and enjoy this little spot quite a bit. This is a seasonal series that I did of trees in spring, summer, fall, and winter. There's Giallo trying to steal the stage once again. And I watch TV on my old iMac. I serve up my old iMac with TV and music. The paintings that I chose for this room all have that Payne's blue gray feel to them. And you can see over there on the right hand side, there's a little bit of black on the walls. Yes, we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. 
But yeah, I really have discovered over the years how much I love contrast. So you'll be seeing lots of that. And back around to this painting, which again has all the colors all over the house from the darks to the lights, the yellows, the blues. The hallway now has all of my family photos in it. They used to be scattered everywhere and I love having them all together. It's like my whole family reunion gathering in the hallway. This room was painted, I think, two years ago. And some of you on social media may have seen some of the steps of that along the way, but I wanted to paint a border to match the shower curtain that I found for inspiration because I can't paint a straight line. I don't care how much tape I use, it's not perfect and straight. The paintings here are by my mom again, and there's two watercolors in this room. One is plein air painted outside my house one year when we had snow outside. And the other one is painted on the beach in Oregon. So I have varying temperatures in this room. Next, we go over to my bedroom and you can kind of see the contrast in the wall colors here a little bit better because they've got a big old light in there. This room just doesn't have any lights. They didn't build it with lights. So I just have little lamps. But that one wall is chocolate brown, then there's grays elsewhere. I wanted this room to feel very neutral, but I really wanted this focal piece on the wall. It's a watercolor with pen and ink that I did a while back, and I ordered it as this block, these wood blocks from Society6. And while you zoom in on it and it looks a little fuzzy, from a distance, it looks spectacular. I mean, it was blown way up from a smaller piece, so that's why it got a little fuzzy. But I don't even care because I think it looks amazing in here. On this wall, I've got one of my drawings that I did many, many decades ago, of a baby elephant surrounded by parent elephants. And then this is a drawing that I did when I was in second grade and I want a ribbon for it. It's on the very first Earth Day and it says, Stop Pollution. And then this is one of the largest pencil drawings that I've ever done, this wolf. And you can't really tell, but there's a blue sky in there that took the longest time out of anything, trying to get an even blue sky behind it. Of course, the dogs have fallen asleep in the time it took me to walk around the room. That's kind of how the, the life they live goes. So there you are. My fish tank is back with having fish in it. You saw those in a recent video. And these three are also videos. They're all graphite. And I wanted that black and white feel in the room. So I've got Harry Potter, a squirrel on a throne, and dogwoods. Each one of those is available in the links down below. This is the LDF flooring that is in the bathrooms, kitchen, laundry room, etc. Complements the wood floor that's in the studio and everything else. And in this bathroom, I used the same chocolate brown, but I used it with white instead of gray as the accent. Painting up there in the window is by a friend on Instagram. And then I did another border because, again, I could not get it straight to save my life. So, you know, a little happy border covers that up. In the studio, this is the desk that I use. It's a giant one. The top lifts up so you can have it at all different angles. And then I just have art stuff everywhere and snacks, of course. And I rearranged the art on the walls. I put new pieces up and some pieces I just removed and put them in a different area so it would just feel very different. This one is brand newly framed. To the left, the hexagons, by the way, is alcohol ink and the uh, sunset is in pastels. And then this one is colored pencils. So you can kind of get an idea. I kind of do all the mediums and then we've got watercolor here. So I've got kind of a whole smattering of inspiration stuff there. On the opposite end of the room are two big long shelves. And I've just collected a whole bunch of pieces that inspire me. Some of them are ones that I did that I want to either redo something around them, something like them. Uh, the dog there is by my mom. And then this piece right here is Starry Night done in quilling. I bought that. It was a fortune, but I bought it on Etsy and it's so amazing. I want to do some quilling at some point. We'll see when I have time to do that. The cat drawing is by a student of mine. So thank you for that beautiful tribute to my Punchinello. This drawing, I think I did in high school, might have been college. Couldn't remember when I did the iris. The Madonna and Child was pyrography last Christmas. This round piece is a piece of bamboo that someone in Puerto Rico painted on. I thought that was a cool thing. 
And then we've got a print that I bought when I was at a gallery. And then above that is the Copic Hex class piece that was kind of cool. A card that was made by someone. I need more cards for this now because as I cleaned everything out, I realized I need more cards to put back in here. And then that one is a map that somebody did a gouache painting with pen and ink on. I thought that was While a cool idea. While that was heating up, I decided so to open some now mail. Let's head back to, to the, the other end of the house. I was hungry. Pick up some things that were in the box. So thank you to those who sent me some encouragement. That window, by the way, is from the dining room looking into the kitchen. So there is that little opening. I would love to just tear that whole thing out myself and just make this all open. But, you know, sometimes you, you got to wait till you hit the lottery before you can do the things you want to in your house. But you can see the, the pathway that you, you can pass food back and forth from the kitchen to, into the dining room if needed. But let's look through some of the things that I did to the kitchen. This used to be all brown cabinets, just plain, boring brown cabinets that they put standard in houses. And I painted them black, which scared everybody. I told people and they were like, you're going to do what? But I painted the walls yellow. It's the same yellow as in the studio. And, you know, hung up some art. I finally hung up um, Pap Pap and Grandma. Uh, their plates I hadn't had up in I can't even remember how long and I painted little details onto the cabinets because I wanted something a little less not necessarily oppressive because I don't find the black to be oppressive it just kind of disappears and makes the yellow really pop but I thought maybe I'd decorate them up a little bit and put some vines and and leaves on the cabinets themselves and then on the knobs that I added because I used to not even have knobs or door pulls on anything but I've added flowers that have the same blue that's in the bathroom and the laundry room and the same yellow for the centers that's on the walls. In front of the sink, I painted for his glory from 1 Corinthians 10. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So it's in the kitchen about eating and drinking, but it says whatever you do, do it for his glory. And since I know I'm going in the kitchen, Every morning, like that's what I go, kitchen, bathroom, they see me every day. I thought that would be a good reminder to myself to just keep that in mind all the time. And these are the two cards you saw earlier. So thank you to these ladies for sending me a little encouragement. It means a lot. So I appreciate that. So here we have another piece that is an acrylic tray that I got from Society6 with one of my paintings. And you can, you know, order all different kinds of stuff there. It's kind of cool. The things that they'll put art on. And here we have my fox painting. And now we get to my favorite spot in the whole house, which is the area, not just this table, but the area around it. And I'll show you more of how the table got made in, in just a bit here. But I wanted to give you a preview of like what it had looked like before. It was just kind of pink, just pink and too many things on the walls. And I started painting the black and I just went, hmm, can I do this? Can I do this? And I was texting a friend like, what do you think? Is it too much? And I said, you know, I can always paint over it if I don't like it. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved half a wall. The whole wall would have been too much. But I love that great painting with the dark frame and the dark matting and goes well with the dark table. And it just, I don't know, it just really works great. And a drawing that I did of my kitty. And then let's look at the table itself. Now, this table had been painted about 25, 30 years ago. I painted it myself, but I made the mistake of not using any epoxy to protect it. You can see there's dings on it. There are places where it got kind of dirty and I just could no longer wash it anymore. Like there was just, if I started washing it even stronger with more chemicals, it would just peel off the paint itself. So that's when I decided to just go a completely different direction. And I painted it all black. I painted the black chairs and the black tabletop while the old carpet was in because I didn't have to worry about making messes on the floor. And then when the new carpet is in, which is what you're seeing under my feet there, I could just paint that center section, which was much easier to do in the middle of the table. I started by using chalk to make the drawing. I combined two sunflowers. One had a really detailed center in it, but the outside petals were just very boring. They were all the same shape. And then I had another sunflower picture that had these really cool kind of floofy sorts of petals. 
but it had a really boring center in it because it was so deep and dark that you didn't see any details. So I combined the two so that I could put a really nice middle in it with a lot of these you know, different dots of color. The green dots are actually not green paint. That's yellow paint on my brush that I've used a wet brush to pick the color up with. So it's basically thin yellow over top of brown and I got a green out of it. So I was very excited to find ways to combine some of these things or water them down so that they would turn different colors because I didn't have a huge selection in terms of colors to blend with. But I made do with what I had because I wanted to use up all these paints. That was one of the reasons for repeating colors throughout the house. I didn't want to buy another can of paint and have another can of leftover anywhere. I just wanted it all gone. I even have another artist friend who wants to paint some furniture black and she's going to get my black leftovers and anything else that I might have that she's in need of. So that is pretty much it for the art tour in my house. Hope it was inspirational to you. Maybe you'll paint on a wall and do something crazy yourself. Get a little bolder with color because, you know, you can always paint over it. No big deal. Before I go, a little heads up. In July, which is going to be my next video, I'm going to start posting my videos four hours earlier. Just doing a little test to see who's around when. So if you're somebody who likes to watch the premiere of a video, then look for it a bit earlier. I'll set it to be a premiere so we can join and chat together while I paint. Because it's going to be a watercolor one for World Watercolor Month. I will see you guys then. Take care. <laughs>